We have Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 coming out on February 4th, and can your PC run it? Today we also have console spec targets, which is really interesting, but also PC spec targets. And as is a huge deal lately when we're getting PC system requirements list, uh, the question always seems to be, uh, is this native resolution or not? Uh, maybe an important note, the PC specs are listed without any upscaling in mind. Now that's a really big deal because some PC requirements lists have been published recently that uh, didn't state that they were using upscaling and then they actually were. So if you thought you were getting that performance at the listed resolution, you really weren't. I'm so excited my new phone just showed up in the mail and it's like Christmas came early for me. Uh, this is so cool. This is the Red Magic 10 Pro. And if you are interested in your gaming hardware giving you a competitive edge, this is the phone that has you covered. Uh, because check out, it has shoulder triggers. It has programmable shoulder triggers, meaning anywhere in the game, you can make pressing these press there on the screen. Aim down sights and shoot just as if you were on a regular controller. You absolutely have that covered uh, with this phone and gives you a massive competitive edge, not trying to hit all of that with your fingers on the display at the same time. Not only that, you know how important a high refresh rate monitor is for competitive gaming on PC. This has 144 hertz screen on the phone. Same massive competitive edge and you're not gonna block part of the screen with a notch because hey, look, it's using the, uh, the, the face camera right there, it, it, but, but look, when it's not using the fo face camera, that disappears, you've got it. Uh, meaning this can unlock with your face and everything, but it's an under display camera, which is amazing. Uh, has a great cooling system. Uh, if I pop off the, uh, the, the uh, case here real quick, you can see that we've got um, uh, this, this cooling fan right here. So the, uh, actually right there, that's the cooling fan. Uh, exhausts out the side here and it has liquid metal cooling system uh, to keep this Snapdragon 8 Elite processor in here, which is massive, uh, keep it cool, uh, which is amazing and it's not going to uh, lose performance over time due to the amazing cooling. Also, it has amazing battery life, which is great when you're playing games. I've been using this thing all day, playing games, watching videos, all of that, and I'm still sitting here at 73% battery life. It's extremely impressive. This has everything you need in a gaming phone, but it's also just a great phone. Uh, feels good in the hand. Um, uh, has an audio jack, so you won't get the Bluetooth audio latency. I wish I could say more, but check the link in the video description for more information. And a huge thank you to Red Magic for sponsoring today's video. So anyway, we do have confirmation directly from the game developers that these performance targets are listed without upscaling. Uh, console specs, on the other hand, are listed with upscaling. Um, uh, at least for, for some of them here. But anyway, we could talk a little bit about console, but I think, uh, you know, PC focused channel, let's go ahead and start here. Also, I really like this system requirements list overall, uh, makes it very clear what we're getting. Uh, we have low settings, medium settings, and high settings, as well as ultra settings. And we have a variety of resolutions and frame rates, and it does make the resolutions and frame rates very clear. Uh, so anyway, it looks like to just get in the door, they're only asking for a GTX 1066 gigabyte and a Ryzen 5 2600 or a Core i5 8400 if you have an AMD GPU, an RX 580, but you do need 100 gigabytes of SSD space. Notice it does specify SSD. That seems to be the case with most games these days designed around current gen consoles, which have fast SSDs. Also 16 gigabytes of RAM. Notice that a bunch of these things, including the RAM, step up as soon as you go past this kind of minimum low type setting. So if you're still on a system with 16 gigabytes of RAM, that could potentially be an issue uh, if you're trying to even play at 1080p 60 medium settings if these system requirements are to be believed. Now, again, um, I can't benchmark the game yet. It comes out on February 4th. If you guys are interested in me benchmarking this game on the channel on a variety of PC hardware when it comes out, let me know. And if there's enough interest, I can try to uh, make that happen. Anyway, uh, what do I think about this overall for the min spec? Okay, 1080p 30 on a GTX 1060, especially if it's a native 1080p resolution. Um, that seems pretty fair for a, uh, a big uh, game coming out uh, these days. A 1060 is not as young as it used to be. So I think that's, that, that's perfectly fair. 
I also think a 1060, and I just blinded you, apologies after the fact. Uh, flashbang warning a few seconds ago. Anyway, uh, GTX 1060 <laughs> and RX 580 are generally similarly performant, so I don't see anything fishy going on here in the AMD versus NVIDIA recommendations or anything like that. Uh, so overall, that min spec to me looks pretty good, and I think a lot of people are going to be able to play this game, which is great. Uh, if you want to play at 1080p medium settings at 60 FPS, uh, the GPUs jump up to an RTX 3060 or an RX 6600 XT. So let's look at how that scales. Also, if you don't have one of these GPUs, I know a lot of times when system requirements charts get posted, people are like, well, my GPU isn't one of the ones listed, so what do I do? Uh, I'll link this relative performance chart from Tech Power Up in the video description. It's not a perfect match to every single game, uh, but it gives you ballpark figures of how your GPU would perform relative to the ones listed. So you can click on any GPU here, that'll set it as the 100% baseline, and then you can see how other GPUs scale compared to that. Um, so anyway, we need to scroll up to an RTX 3060 from a 1060 to kind of see how that compares, and maybe your GPU falls somewhere here in between, uh, and you can watch these percentages to kind of get an idea of how much better your GPU is than the 1060. Uh, so as we scroll down, we pass some, pa pa pass some popular cards like the 1660, uh, RTX, uh, we got a 3050, a 1080, a 2060, 6600 from AMD, uh, 2060 Super, 2070. Here we are at the 3060. We're about 84% faster than the 1066 gigabyte. Uh, and then the uh, 6600 XT is in the same general ballpark. If I now set the 3060 as the baseline, uh, we are now seeing the 6600 XT is, you know, about 8% faster when you're not using ray tracing, that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, depends on the game. Some games one wins, some games the other. Other uh, in the same ballpark. So again, the AMD versus Nvidia choices here seem reasonable. Also, the fact that using a 6600 XT indicates that 8 gigabytes of VRAM should be fine for these settings, despite the fact that uh, RTX 3060s, well, most of them have 12 gigabytes, there's an 8 gigabyte version, and this uh, system requirement chart didn't actually specify. I would assume it's the original uh, 12 gigabyte version, unless stated otherwise, since that, again, was the original 3060 that, did, that, that launched at the beginning. Now, what does concern me a little bit more is the potential for CPU-related uh, performance issues, uh, because that uh, is a big jump. You're going from 30 FPS on a Ryzen 5 2600 to 60 FPS on a Ryzen 5 7600X. That is a massive jump in, GP uh, sorry, in CPU performance. That, that, that's absolutely huge. And the Intel jump is quite big as well, an i5-8400 to an i5-13600K. Again, a massive jump here. Now, it's potentially possible, uh, and this does happen on system requirements lists from time to time, that these just happen to be the CPUs that were in the test system uh, with these GPUs when they were confirming that this type of system could reach, you know, uh, 1080p 60fps medium settings. And maybe they didn't try a lot of CPUs in between. So that is possible. But I would say more likely this indicates that uh, you're going to need a fairly powerful CPU to hit 60 frames per second. Um, a lot of games nowadays, especially when they're targeting current gen consoles only, uh, which have much more powerful CPUs than the um, you know PS4 type generation did, uh, well, uh, if they're targeting 60 FPS on those types of CPUs, and sometimes on consoles you might get even CPU-related performance drops in NPC-heavy areas, things like that, and oftentimes console performance is more optimized than we get on PC, what I'm trying to say is, I think in a, in a uh, RPG that could potentially have dense city environments with a lot of NPCs, that it's possible that in those scenarios, this could be another game that gets rather CPU limited, and that's something I'm going to want to look out for if I do go ahead and benchmark this game when it launches. So anyway, I would say that the GPU requirements at this point in RTX 3060 for 1080p 60fps at medium settings, while it's not the most performant thing in the world, um, I don't hate that. Uh, again, we are, we're moving into the 50 series now, so th these GPUs GPUs are aging a bit, 1080p 60 medium, uh, as long as medium settings look good in this game, uh, and we have no indication that they won't, you know, <laughs> um, I think that's a, a reasonable spec. If you want to play at 1440p 60fps at medium settings, so we're keeping the same graphic settings but moving up to 1440p, uh, they're not now asking for a 3060 Ti or a 6700 XT. Now, so how much more performance are they asking for for that? Well, from a 3060 uh, to a 3060 Ti, 
uh, is about a 28% performance lift, and the 3060 Ti is very similar performance to a 6700 XT, uh, as long as you're not spilling over eight gigabytes of VRAM, and the 3060 Ti only has eight gigabytes of VRAM, so this is once again indicating that at least at medium settings, eight gigabytes of VRAM is probably gonna be fine even at 1440p resolution. Um, so, so, so there's that. Uh, again, uh, 1440p native settings uh, at 60 FPS medium on these class of GPU, I think again is pretty reasonable. And again, at 1440p, I think a lot of people would be happy using DLSS quality um, to either boost your frame rate or to um, you know turn up graphic settings beyond medium, that type of thing. As long as the VRAM can handle it beyond medium, that, that is something to think about. Um, but again, notice these CPUs here are these, these beefy CPUs, and uh, upscaling doesn't help you when you're CPU limited, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, now, if you want high settings, uh, now they're dropping back to 1080p again. So we got 1080p and 1440p, but now at high settings, notice that um, they're keeping the rather beefy CPU requirements uh, although not quite as high. They, 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 they're dropping them back from the 60 FPS requirement, uh, which is interesting, although still above the 1080p minimum low uh, uh, CPU requirement, indicating that some of the graphic settings moving from low to high are probably uh, increasing the demand on the CPU. Sometimes that's like draw distance or the number of NPCs rendered in a scene or something like that. And notice these are still fairly beefy CPUs, 5800X, 12600K, um, a lot of cores and threads here, and that's targeting 30 FPS. So another indication that there could be a more of a CPU bottleneck going on in this game than a GPU bottleneck. Now this is 1080p, 30 FPS at high settings. Uh, they do have a 2060 Super. Notice that's an eight gigabyte GPU. The original 2060 would have been a six gigabyte GPU. So that is to me indicating that you, for high settings at 1080p, you'll want at least eight gigabytes. Um, and again, now we're at a 2060 Super RX uh, 5700. If we wanna look at where that falls on the relative performance chart, uh, we're now backing off a little bit from the 1440p uh, 60 FPS medium, uh, and we're dropping back just a little bit. Um, to a 2060 Super. Notice the 2060 Super is actually pretty similar to the uh, the performance of a 3060 12 gigabyte, uh, which we had uh, on the other uh, you know recommended settings for, for 1080p medium 60. So that's interesting. It's a similar power level of GPU, and the RX 5700 is just uh, just slightly uh, below that on this particular relative performance chart. They're close enough that in some games one probably outperforms the other, or maybe they tie. Um, anyway, so, but the interesting thing that, then again here though is that these performance uh, requirements and these performance requirements are pretty similar. And the difference is you're dropping from 60 FPS to 30 FPS by going up from medium settings to high settings. So that is potentially indicating uh, that the scalability from medium settings to high settings is pretty demanding. Um, again, if we're trying to read in as much as we can into these system requirements. Now, uh, at 1440p high settings, and we're jumping to 60 FPS, so notice compared to the 1080p 30 high, we're not just doubling the frame rate from 30 to 60, um, but we're also increasing resolution from 1080p to 1440p, which increases the burden on the GPU. Uh, it would not increase the burden on the CPU to get, uh, generally to get the more um, uh, resolution, but to get more frame rate uh, would require an increased CPU if this, uh, these CPUs weren't capable of hitting 60 FPS. So once again, indicating that it's possible that this game can be incredibly CPU limited, and if you're trying to play at high settings at 60 FPS, you might need a 7800X 3D or a 13700K. Uh, those are some of the fastest gaming CPUs on the market. Not quite the fastest, but close. So. Uh, that's asking for quite a bit. I'm curious if the high setting has any sort of ray tracing going on, um, whether software-based or otherwise, because oftentimes that can be uh, actually pretty demanding on the CPU. But uh, again, that's just, um, I'm curious. Uh, the GPU, notice that our, um, for uh, the high settings, we're also wanting 32 gigabytes of system RAM. At least that's what's on their test systems. We have to see if that's actually required in game. Uh, and then we have a 4070 and a 7800 XT listed for 1440p 60 FPS high settings. Now again, that's at native 1440p. So if you were using DLSS quality, I would imagine you could get by with much less powerful GPUs. Um, however, 
if it's CPU bottlenecked, you're not going to be able to get uh, get uh, you know more performance out of upscaling. That's just the way that uh, you know it really, upscaling relieves the burden on the GPU, not the CPU. Now, if we want to look at how the 4070 and the 7800 XT stack up against the 2060 Super, okay, if we scroll up from the 2060 Super up to a 4070 and 7800 XT type performance level, uh, we're talking about doubling the performance. Uh, depending on which one you click on there. So it's about a doubling of the performance. This also puts you into a similar ballpark to cards like a 6800 XT, an RX 6800. Um, a 7700 XT is a bit weaker, a 3070 Ti is a bit weaker, 6900 XT is a bit stronger, um, you know, a 3080 Ti is a bit stronger. You're kind of in this ballpark. Uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, we're going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS. So in and of itself, that would require a doubling of, of performance generally. And then we're also increasing the resolution. Uh, so this would indicate that this isn't a perfect 30 or this isn't a perfect 60 because it's not um, more than doubling performance uh, as far as what they're asking for. Um, but again, generally system requirements, when they say it's averaging uh, 30 or averaging 60, they don't mean exactly 30 or exactly 60. Oftentimes it's more like 40 and you know 65 or something like that. They just call it 30 and 60 for convenience. Um, and it's kind of traditional based on how VSync worked before VRR displays were common. Anyway, uh, if you want to go all the way up to maxed uh, ultra settings, at 1440p 60 FPS, which would give you similar performance to 4K 30 FPS, um, you're gonna need the, the beefy CPUs again. I think that's if you're hitting the 60 FPS. Uh, and then they're moving up to a 4080 and a 7900 XT. So 4080 and 7900 XT. So um, in other words, notice that this is just going from high settings to ultra settings if we're compared to the 1440p 60. Because uh, this is still 1440p 60, we're just going from high settings to ultra settings. So how much more horsepower are they asking for uh, just to go from high settings to ultra settings? This gives us some idea of the scalability of the graphic settings. So 4070 to 4080 is about a 58% performance jump here. So that's pretty... Uh, uh, that's a pretty big jump to just increase the settings from high to ultra. But again though, System requirements lists, often um, that's reading a little too closely into these numbers, because like I said, oftentimes these numbers are more kind of a ballpark figure. Uh, the 7900 XT is generally a bit weaker than a 4080, uh, so perhaps you don't really need quite that big of a jump. If we, if we looked at the 7900 XT, that's about a 40% jump. Uh, still a pretty big jump though. Anyway, uh, so that's where we're at with that. Uh, overall, like I said, it looks, uh, what this looks like to me is there's a lot of scalability in the GPU. I'm a little more concerned about the potential of CP heavy CPU bottlenecks. Um, that'll be something that I'll want to investigate when the game comes out, if there's enough interest. So let, like I said, let me know in the comment section. Uh, we can also take a little bit of a look at the console specs, uh, if you're interested, because hey, we don't usually get that. Looks like the Series S is targeting 1080p 30. They don't give us an idea what sort of graphic settings that would be equivalent to on PC. Uh, the Series X has a performance mode that is an upscaled with, uh, to a 1440p output, but it would be below a 1440p internal resolution, targeting 60 FPS unlocked with VRR. That might indicate that it drops below 60 FPS. Uh, again, I, my, my question is, is that because of CPU bottlenecks in certain areas? That's often the case in games, because you can downscale the resolution as far as you want, at least as much as you're willing to tolerate to relieve the burden on the GPU. Uh, but if the CPU gets uh, bottlenecked, it's a, it's a harder optimization issue to solve. Um, the Series X has a fidelity mode that can go up to an upscaled 4K output, but again, internally would be lower than that. They don't specify how far, and that's only targeting a 30 FPS output. And again, these upscaling is accomplished with uh, AMD FSR. Uh, the PS5 has a performance mode that targets uh, a 1440p output. In other words, it's the same as the Series X performance mode. And the fidelity mode looks the same um, as well as the Series X's fidelity mode. However, there's a PS5 Pro mode, and it looks like that will target an upscaled 4K output uh, with an unlocked VRR 60 FPS uh, with PSSR upscaling. Hopefully this is one of the games where PSSR looks good uh, and isn't being abused or not um, not being super compatible with the uh, the graphics in the game as we've seen in some games. In some games it's looked great and others it hasn't. All right guys, that's what I've got for you today. Like I said, let me know if you're interested in me benchmarking this game when it launches. Uh, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.